Okay. So this is what Thomas White, who actually used it in his company, mm -hmm. this is what he said. Mm -hmm. Appreciative inquiry can get you much better results than seeking out and solving problems. That's an interesting concept for me, and I imagine for most of you, because telephone companies are among the best problem solvers in the world. We troubleshoot everything. We concentrate enormous resources on correcting problems that have relatively minor impact on our overall performance. When used continually and over a long period of time, this approach can lead to a negative culture. If we combine a negative culture with all the challenges we face today, it could be easy to convince ourselves that we have too many problems to overcome, to slip into a paralyzing sense of hopelessness. And yet, if we flip the coin, we have so much to be excited about. We are in the most dynamic and the most influential business of our times. We ought to be excited, motivated, and energized. We can be if we just turn ourselves around and start looking at our jobs and ourselves differently. If we kill negative self-talk and celebrate our successes. If we dissect what we do right and apply the lessons to what we do wrong, we can solve our problems and re-energize the organization at the same time. In the long run, what is likely to be more useful Demoralizing a successful workforce by concentrating on their failures or helping them over their last few hurdles by building a bridge with their successes. Don't get me wrong. I'm not advocating mindless happy talk. Appreciative inquiry is a complex science designed to make things better. We cannot ignore problems, we just need to approach them from the other side. So we are not ignoring problems, we are not rejecting them, we are not running away from them, we just need to look at them from another perspective so that we don't get paralyzed by the problems. And this is uh, very often what happens to problematic organizations people get paralyzed. Then they start a negative culture within the organization. I have experienced, for example, in many meetings, after the people meet with their directors, okay, or their Paris peace or whatever, their leaders, after that, they do evaluation and they start pointing out problems, pointing to one another, who caused it, etc. You know, the energy in the room dies down. And they all leave the room very sad. No motivation. Some of them even resign after some time. Because you cannot withstand a negative culture for a long time without getting stressed out. Whereas if you talk about positive things, what did we do right, etc., you know, then the energy becomes higher. Okay? When I used this with many congregations, you know, they were surprised. You know, no animosity when people were sharing their stories about their successes. In fact, some of them said, Father, it's the first time I talked about myself. I talk about my success. Kasi parang wala kami culture na ganyan. Why are you proud of that? You know, it seems that you know the work of God in us is something that we should hide, which is contrary to what the Gospels tell us. Let your light shine upon others so that they may see your good works and praise your heavenly Father in heaven. So what's wrong with being successful and telling other people our successes? So it's the opposite, you know? I think that's the whole attitude of appreciative inquiry. And you as directors or supervisors, when you call them to your office, when you want to discuss something from them, think about 
the reaction of these people. Nako, pinatawag ko ni sister. Problema yan. Alam ko na yan. So, they, they, they don't want to walk to your office because they know. Okay? And yet, if you are positive and you are affirmative, you know, people want to go to your office. People will want to go to your office. And you can still tell them, you know, the things you can still exercise fraternal correction. But in another way, and this is where words are very important. So one of the things that I, I am challenged today as the provincial is I have to call my brothers. And they are not perfect, you know. There are some things that they do that I want to hide from them, you know, or they want to hide from me. But as the provincial superior, I have to talk to them. I have to see what good things they are doing, you know, to affirm them, to make them happy because I know you know, if I were in their shoes, I will not be able to stand what they are doing there. <coughs> so I think it's the attitude that we have. And if only at the end of this session, you don't even know how to use appreciative inquiry in strategic planning, but you become more affirmative in your life, I would have succeeded already. And from being affirmative with your catechists, because these are heroic people, you know, especially in the public schools. I had experience when we were seminarians. You know, it was one of the things that I hated to do. Okay, and then many of your catechists, if not most, are complaining we are not paid enough. Okay, we don't have the support of the pastor. Very difficult to ask him even to hear confessions or to say mass, etc. Sure. And yet, this is his responsibility, it's not ours. Okay? So, how do you motivate people who are like that? That is the task that you are confronted with. And what I'm offering you here is a way to affirm them so that together they can say, you know, our director is so affirming that even if I don't want to go to this public school, you know, I get so much affirmed, and because of that, I see the value of what I'm doing. Okay, so if you only get that attitude, you know, Lysander did not make a mistake in inviting me here. You know, forget the, the methodology, you know, you just invite me if you need. But the attitude, I think, is very important. Because with the methodology should come also the attitude. Okay? So, we will have lunch. Uh, it's 11.10 uh, in